Since identity is so crucial to authentication, to uh, authorization, to accountability, um, we uh, have to do a lot of identity management. And, and identity management is... Uh, it's not all of access control, but is fundamental to access control. Sometimes it is referred to as identity and access management. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is important. This is uh, crucial to what we're doing. And the the management of identity and identification is. Uh, uh, one of the more difficult tasks in security, um, getting it right at any rate, making sure that we have uh, proper identification, that we verify it so that we can do this properly. Um, and this is becoming... Um, uh, well, I can't say it's becoming more important. It's it's um, definitely an important task, and, and we have already uh, always known that. But um, it is becoming an increasingly difficult task. It is consuming more time, more resources, more thought, or at least it should be, because of its centrality to access control and because of the... Uh, importance of access control to security overall. So uh, we are looking at problems of increased complexity in terms of our systems. We have uh, systems that are comprised of subsystems, which are systems in their own right and may have their own identity management systems and access control systems that have to be incorporated in the totality of what we're doing. Um, so we have been, uh, and, and we will be talking about uh, single sign-on, uh, that seems to be getting increasingly further out of reach. Um, and, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that more later, but, you know, certainly we need to um, look at our very complex systems. We need to... Uh, determine the um, the difficulties, um, the complexities, the uh, issues that we face, and ensure that we are, in fact, doing it properly. Um, the, uh, well, I, I, an additional uh, factor in, involved here, not just the, the uh, different types of systems, different types of hardware, different types of software, different uh, types of applications, the uh, network resources, the, the fact that we are um, building systems that uh, may have remote components. Sometimes our access control systems are even remote. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about network access control. Um, but, uh, you know, th these, these systems are becoming uh, complex, but also our users are becoming complex, in a sense. We are having uh, issues with regard to uh, users and um, what types. You know, we, we uh, have thought of our principals as, as our you know, employees in, in our enterprise, but... Um, you know, we've got to uh, think about what type of employees, you know, just, you know, in terms of the, the insiders who uh, need to have access, but what type of access do they have to have? Um, and uh, again, the part compartmentalization of security in, in some regards, we, we need to understand uh, who needs what level of privilege the you know the uh, least privilege uh, principle that we have talked about um, the uh, need to know 
issues and, and those types of things within our organization. But then we've got outsiders as well. Um, we have uh, increasingly contractors. We have increasingly outsourcing of, of various functions. And uh, we have uh, uh, partners in our deals. We have uh, customers, clients, um, who may need certain levels of access because of what we are providing them. So all of these things become increasingly important with regard to our identity management and our access control. Um, uh, different kinds of identity data uh, that are going to be used. Um, different times, types of, of data about the, uh, the individuals, about the identities that are going to have access to our system. And, you know, are we storing personal information? And what is our uh, responsibility with regard to that? Um, uh, it's going to be a while before we get into uh, law and investigations, but the the privacy issues in in regard to that, um, depending on uh, the country that you are operating in, but remembering that these days, um, particularly with regard to uh, virtual companies, uh, the company, you know, the, the uh, locality that you are operating in can be anywhere in the world. You know, our, our customers, are we uh, storing personal information? You know, do you, uh, because you reside and, and uh, have registered your business in the United States, store personal information because the United States has no privacy laws? and then run into the fact that a whole bunch of your uh, customers and clients are uh, residing in and, and citizens of the European Union, and therefore there are very strong privacy protections and requirements in terms of what information you can store and can't store and how you have to protect it if you do store it. So... Uh, that has to be addressed. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, uh, now talking about laws and regulations, um, there is legal information, the legality of information. Um, Gloria was uh, uh, secretary and specialized in uh, taking minutes. And uh, as she frequently said about that, um, the it is important to know not just what to include in the minutes but what not to include in the minutes um, and there are uh, cases where it is uh, better if you do not store certain types of of information the, the legalities of that not just personal information but um, in terms of uh, uh, minutes in, in this particular example um, the discussion uh, that goes on. Um, if we include all aspects of the discussion and, and uh, you know, all the topics that were raised, it may cloud the issue of what was eventually decided. And so um, we do have to uh, look at, um, you know, are we storing uh, information that has legal ramifications and what do we do in that regard uh our login credentials to to manage systems of course that's that's the easy one that we are uh, uh obviously concerned about but sometimes that is the least of our worries